everyone. I'm Adam Brown, and this is Shell Point Today for Thursday, December 17th. On today's show, we'll head out to the Woodlands to check out the contributions the Oakmont residents made this year to the Toys for Tots charities. And we'll take you back to the Shell Point Singers concert earlier this month for more highlights. But first, don't forget about tomorrow's outing to the Gulf Shore Playhouse for Jacob Marley's Christmas Carol. After a delightful dinner, you'll stroll over to the theater to enjoy this magical departure from the Dickens classic. Follow Marley as he journeys through the streets of past, present, and future Christmases. This journey of laughter and terror, redemption and renewal, is sure to warm your heart and bring hope for the holiday season. The cost of the adventure is $86, which includes dinner and a beverage. Court pickups begin on the island at 4 p.m. tomorrow. Coming up on Saturday is another LifeQuest discussion group focused on the spiritual dimension. Come get acquainted with Sonny Torres, the new Director of Spiritual Services for Shell Point. At the event, Sonny will be investigating the invisible ingredients that make life worth living. Join us for a different perspective on the good life and see how spiritual self-care plays a vital role. It's a LifeQuest discussion group you don't want to miss. This Saturday in the Grand Cypress Room of the Woodlands at 10 a.m. Over at the Woodlands, the Oakmont residents raised funds this year so that the less fortunate children of the Fort Myers area might have a good Christmas. Actually, a pretty great Christmas as they were able to purchase shiny new bicycles to donate to the local Toys for Tots. Frank Gercher, resident chairman of the project, delighted the audience with his electronic musical light show last week when everyone gathered to celebrate. Welcome to the Rosemont Christmas Party. Uh, I'm glad all of you could come, and uh, we hope you enjoy this evening. Uh, this is the effort of a lot of people. This is a team effort, and I'm very, very proud of uh, Rosemont. Uh, 30 bicycles uh, for the kids, and many, many toys in our Toys for Tots box. And all of these will go to kids in the local area, and I think there'll be a lot of smiles on Christmas morning thanks to our Rosemont uh, folks, our Rosemont residents. We are uh, very much involved at Christmas time with the Marine Corps, Tim Kinney, uh, and uh, also the Salvation Army. So I'm the, uh, we call it the LCO, the Local Community Organizer for the Lee County Toys for Tots program. All the toys that are collected by us in Lee County stay in Lee County. All the monies that are collected or donated to us here, we send them up to headquarters for them to record them and everything, but it all goes into an account. It stays here in Lee County. So what you donate stays here. I think this is fantastic. I, I didn't expect this. I understand it started a number of years ago with a few bicycles and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. We have four events planned for 2016, one in March, uh, one toward the end of May. We have our harvest brunch uh, in October, and then we have another Christmas party. We'll try to do light shows and variations on that for the harvest brunch and for the Christmas party next year. Uh, the uh, March event will be, I think that's our potluck, and we will have that in the Oak Room and outside, a combination of inside and outside. Uh, in the uh, May uh, party, we will have um, probably in the Grand Cypress Room, but I'm not sure yet. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but it will not have lights. The, we have two with lights and two without lights. And uh, we'll vary the songs, vary the uh, scenario. Uh, we have all kinds of possibilities. So, yes, we will do it again next year. Here's Mary Kay Grimaldi once again to talk about showcasing your holiday decorations. 
The holidays are here, bringing colorful displays of lights and evergreens, snowmen and wreaths galore. Do you have a favorite collection you hang around your home for Christmas? A themed arrangement that brings cheer for the new year? Or even special antique dishes or a trendy table setting used as the holiday host to entertain guests? We'd be interested in sharing your style and flair for fellow residents to see on Shell Point today. Please contact the SPTV studio at 489-8431. As promised, we'd like to show some more highlights from this year's Shell Point Singers Christmas Concert. Keep in mind, you can get your own copy of the entire concert on DVD. Just call us at Shell Point TV for easy delivery and billing to your resident account. He was born in an obscure village, the son of a peasant woman. He grew up in another village where he worked in a carpenter shop until he was 30. Then for three years, he became a wandering preacher. He never wrote a book. He never held an office. He never had a family nor owned a house. He didn't go to college. He never visited a big city. He never traveled 200 miles from the place where he was born. He did none of those things one usually associates with greatness. He had no credentials but himself. He was only 33 when the tide of public opinion turned against him. His friends ran away. One of them denied him. He was turned over to his enemies and went through a mockery of a trial. He was executed by the state. While he was dying, his executioners gambled for his clothing, the only property he had on earth. When he was dead, he was laid in a borrowed grave through the pity of a friend. Twenty centuries have come and gone, and today Jesus is the central figure of the human race and the leader of mankind's progress. All the armies that have ever marched, all the navies that have ever sailed, all the parliaments that have ever sat, all the kings that have ever reigned, put together, have not affected the life of humankind on this earth as powerfully as this solitary life.
And now let's take a look at today's happenings, menus, and Village Church Connections. Hello and happy Thursday. This is the happening segment of Shell Point TV. I'm Caitlin Van Scoy, and I'm here to give you all of Thursday's activities. We start bright and early at 7.15 with the Health Connections class, Bend, Breathe, and Balance. That's in the health club on the island. And at 8 o'clock, Men's Golf Association will be meeting at the Shell Point Golf Club. Also at 8 o'clock, the Round Robin Doubles Tennis will be meeting at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. And some of the card game will be played at 9 o'clock in the Sable Room at the Woodlands. Current events will be discussed in the Woodlands Game Room at 9.30. And the Paddlers Club head out for their weekly outing from the kayak storage at 9.30. Another 9.30 activity is ladies match play tennis. They'll be at the Woodlands. And introduction to line dancing will be at 9.45 in the health club. That's followed by 10.15 basic line dancing in the health club. And then the Suzy Q heads out to Rum Runners for lunch. That's at 11 o'clock. You do need to sign up for that. We move to the afternoon and start with Mahjong at 12.45 in the library lounge. And the Aviation Club will be gathering in the Manatee Room at 1.15. Also at 1.15, the Butterfly Garden Committee meeting will be meeting at the first floor west parlor of King's Crown. Shuffleboard is available at 1.15 at the Shuffleboard Courts. And the Stamp Ministry will be gathering in the Stamp Room at 2 o'clock. We move to 2.45 for a Health Connections class, Balance and Mobility Training Advanced in the Health Club. And the seamstress will be here for her weekly service starting at 4 o'clock in the Osprey Room. At 4.30, Alcoholics Anonymous will be meeting in the Sable Room at the Woodlands. And we have a Suzy Q Sunset Christmas Caroling that will be starting at 5 o'clock. And that leaves from the Suzy Q dock, but that is currently full. At 6 o'clock, we have Christmas Carols performed by the Shell Point Jazz Band. Starting at 6 o'clock, Lakewood, 6.15 Oakmont, 6.30 Rosemont, and 6.45 Parkwood. At 6.30, Pinaco will be played in the Library Lounge on the island. And then Christmas Carols will be performed by the Shell Point Jazz Band starting at 7.15 at Eagles Preserve by Ibis and Pelican, 7.30 by Curlew and Heron, and 7.45 by Osprey and Egret. That concludes our Thursday. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you right back here tomorrow. Menus for Thursday. In the crystal room, the crystal platter is homemade meat lasagna with garlic bread and spinach. The dinner special is the crystal carving board for $15.95. The soup of the day is broccoli cheddar bacon. In the Island Cafe for lunch, the special is a mile-high hot corned beef sandwich with slaw for $7.75. The dinner special is Thai night for $8.75. Dinner specials in the Palm Grill are pesto caprice veal for $16.95 or pork tenderloin for $15.95. All menus are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Hi, I'm Andy Hawkins. I'm the senior pastor of the Village Church, and I'm here with Dr. Sue Stranahan. And Sue is the director of spiritual services at Shell Point and has been the minister of spiritual care at the Village Church for how many years, Sue? Thirteen, uh, thirteen and a half. Thirteen and a half, and it's about to come to a conclusion, I understand. It is. That's, a, that's remarkable. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the thing that's really remarkable to me is that this isn't the conclusion of uh, just the time here at Shell Point. This is a retirement of really uh, a series of three different careers, mm -hmm. and I think that's uh, really quite remarkable. Uh, so let's start at, back at the beginning. Uh, how did this all, all start? Uh, what was your first career? My first career was as a missionary nurse. Mm -hmm. um, I went to Congo, the Democratic Republic of Congo, by way of France and Belgium, learned French, tropical medicine in Belgium, and then got to the Republic of Democratic Republic of Congo and worked in a rural mission hospital. Mm -hmm. There was a, a school of nursing at that hospital, and I became involved in that educational process. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And that's sort of, uh, obviously, you were there how long, by the way? Um, 17 years. 17 years. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. And uh, you trained a bunch of other people there while you were there, right? I did. Uh, that, in fact, that was one of the joys of being there, mm -hmm. was being able to train Congolese nurses mm -hmm. to work in the hospital, pass their state exam, be licensed, and work in our hospital. Some went to other uh, facilities to work in, but 
in, only in that way would we get nurses to populate our, our hospital. So it was a very rewarding experience. And I think one of the neatest parts of uh, any kind of missions work uh, in the first place is the fact that you're actually developing a group of people in country yes. uh, to continue on the work, uh, you know, after, after you know, people like mm -hmm. yourself leave. Mm -hmm. And uh, that must be really gratifying. It was. Mm -hmm. Now, that preparation for, for uh, the training that you did of those nurses, uh, that wasn't the end of training nurses, was it? No, it wasn't. And that leads up to my second career, which was uh, um, at Indiana Wesleyan University. I was recruited there to work in their graduate nursing program. It was interesting to me because they had a very unique program that was offered at that time, offered only in the evening for nurses who were on furlough from mission fields and wanted to get their master's degree in community health and then go back to their fields. And so that attracted me to that program. And so I went to uh, Indiana, worked at Indiana Wesleyan for 15 years, wow. working in nursing education and administration. And then somewhere between the Congo and Indiana Wesleyan, you squeezed in a doctoral degree, right? Well, yes, that's true. Mm -hmm. I went to the university. When I came back from Congo, I went to the University of Pittsburgh and got my doctorate in public health. Yeah. And then that's true. I went yeah. to Indiana Fant Wesleyan. Fantastic. Well, how did you come to Shell Point then? That must have been an interesting story. Well, that was a bit of a, a process as well. I was uh, the chair of the nursing programs. And the nursing and credentialing bodies, we wanted all of their nurse educators to have a clinical specialty. Well, my background had been community health, but working in administration, I didn't have time to do community health in Indiana. So I thought spiritual care would be a good discipline for me. So while I was at Indiana Wesleyan, I got my master's in religion and then did one unit of clinical pastoral education over one of the summers. And all of that was in preparation to come to um, Shell Point on a sabbatical leave. Mm -hmm. So I came down one winter for sabbatical and did spiritual care in the pavilion. How about that? It yeah. was a great experience. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. Now, your intention when you came down here for the sabbatical wasn't to make a, a third career, was it? You, you it was were, not. Yeah. It was to go back and practice spiritual care and teach spiritual care to uh, the student nurses that we had in our undergraduate and yeah. our graduate program. Yeah. But uh, God had other plans? Tell us about that. So he did. While I was here, I worked under Ken, pastor Ken Nesselrode at that time, who was the associate pastor, but um, Reverend Jim Davey was the senior pastor and asked me to develop a job description for a chaplain should the village church go that direction and, and hire a chaplain. So I did. I developed this job description and I thought when I did it, this is really a nice job to have. <laughs> And I went back to Indiana Wesleyan to resume my duties, and then I got a call from, from the pastor asking me if I would like to come and be the chaplain and fill that position. And I thought, this is unique how this works out. Yeah, fantastic. Right. And so you uh, responded to that call, came down here, and uh, that was uh, how many years ago? That was 13 years ago. 13 years ago. Yeah, almost 14 now. Yeah, how about that? Mm -hmm. Now, um, obviously, uh, when you came, there was no chaplain position. You were the one who wrote the job description for it. Uh, so you really started this program. Uh, mm -hmm. And so uh, tell us a little bit about uh, how it's developed over the years. Well, fortunately, I had had some experience as a chaplain, and I sort of had an idea of what it should be like. Uh, in connection with that, I looked at some of the accrediting bodies for spiritual programs within nursing homes and hospitals, and based on those guidelines, I tried to develop a program that uh, would fit the minimum basic requirements, and so that's what we did. Uh, Pastor Ken and I worked together, got our heads together, and sort of fleshed out some of the issues that would come up, but what we wanted to do was to make sure that uh, spiritual care would be considered uh, on an equivalent basis with physical care and and mental health. I see. Since we believed, and Shell Point also embraced the mind-body-spirit mm -hmm. connection. Yeah, and eventually that uh, led to, obviously this has a, been a collaborative effort between the Village Church and Shell Point. Shell Point's actually made spiritual care its own department. 
Yes, right? that's yeah. true. I think that was a big step in the, in a, in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not just the pavilion that you oversee because uh, the, the training hasn't stopped. You trained nurses in the Congo, you trained nurses in Indiana Wesleyan, uh, and you've also trained chaplains here to work with you in this process, right? That's right. We have, um, right now, we have four assistant chaplains who are providing spiritual care in the three assisted living uh, facilities in addition to the pavilion. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Now, in the years that you've been here, uh, what would you say might be the, one, of the mo one of the most remarkable memories that you'll take with you as you conclude your time here at Shell Point? Well, it probably sounds egocentric for me to say this, but I look at the growth and the development that I've had in myself, mm. my own spiritual development and the awareness of issues that senior adults face as they near the end of their lifespan, and particularly for many in the, those last few days, weeks of life. It's been a tremendous learning experience for me. If we talk about clinical laboratories, for gerontology, this has been the very best. Yeah. I have grown so much by what I've learned through the residents that have ministered to me and mm -hmm. as I was trying to minister to them. Wow, that's fantastic. Well, I want you to know, Sue, since I've been here, which has been a little less than three years, it's been a delight to work with you on staff. And uh, I've always appreciated the experience that you've brought from all of your careers uh, to our uh, staff conversations and to the ministry of the Village Church. Uh, you've been a great blessing not only to Shell Point, but also to the Village Church and especially to me. So I want to express my deep appreciation. Uh, you've, been a, you've been a great encouragement. And so thank you so much. We certainly uh, hope that you'll not make yourself a stranger mm -hmm. and that you'll stick around in the area and that we'll see much more of you in the days to come. Thank you, Andy. I'm not going anywhere. That's great. <laughs> well, it's great to have you with us today, and thank you for joining us with Village Church Connections. And that brings today's program to a close for Thursday, December 17th. Tune in tomorrow when we will feature resident Kathy Miskell as she talks about the popular Chatty Kathy doll designed by a relative and named after her. Also, we'll recap the top stories from this week. Until then, I'm Adam Brown wishing you a great rest of your day. We'll see you back here tomorrow.